when it's time to lubricate things and start putting them back together, the first thing we're going to do is lube our shaft and attach our knob back on. And the, the grease that I'm going to use for that is going to be a number three. And what we're going to do, we're going to try to get a light coat on this surface because I'm going to put a little grease on that and then push it in and turn it to get some grease in here and then to get some grease in here I'm going to get some grease and put it on this side of the shaft there and try to turn and then push it in push it back in and turn it to get the grease on this side. So we're trying to get just a very, very light film of grease inside here. Now that we've got it all nice and free, but it doesn't have any lubrication, but we don't want to use too much. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dab right there just a little bit on that shaft and behind behind that gear got a little sloppy there okay now I've got some on that shaft, so I'm going to try to push that shaft inside and try to rotate it. Get some there. And then I'm going to put a little grease here. and push it in and rotate it. And once it goes in here, I can't get it, but if I if I put my Q-tip on that, I can turn it. So I should have a little grease here and there and then I'm going to push it back in and I'm going to turn it with my fingers to see how it feels. You should feel a little bit of, uh, it should feel smooth and not too stiff because that's what we were trying to get away from if it's too stiff. So we want it nice and smooth but not too dry or as we'll feel metal against metal will fill the metal of the back of that gear onto the inside of that. So that's why we need a little bit of lube there. And I know this is like a feeling thing, but as you turn it, it should turn freely, but it should be in silent and not grainy. So if you think you've gotten it, now, we're going to put a little bit of grease on this raised surface. The raised surface is just a little dab there. Four. If you wanted to put it right here on the cap, we're just going to just the slightest little dab of grease 
on the inside. And we're going to push our knob on. Uh, have to make sure it's not screwed in too far or it's not going to go in. You can put your finger behind the gear so the shaft doesn't go in and then work your knob. I've got my finger pushing here and I'm working my knob. Working that little grease there. It feels smooth. Now, now uh, this is important about pushing it, but just ever so gently got my finger here holding the shaft and I'm just going to barely put my finger on this putting pressure there. I don't need a lot of pressure just enough to close the gap. try it. Okay, it should be moving freely, but you shouldn't have any space in here. You shouldn't be able to hear anything. If you can move it and you can tell it's moving in and out, then there's too much space in here. You don't want any space. The only space you want in here is from grease. Now I think I have too much space because if you listen, uh, you can't hear it, but I can feel it. So I, I, I didn't get it tight enough, and I pulled it out some. So I'm going to loosen it. Get my finger on the inside, and just a little bit of pressure out here. Now, as you're turning it, if it's turning freely and then at some point it, it, you, you feel resistance and then once you get past that, that point, it gets easy again. Well, turn it until it gets right to the... Well, keep turning it to see if you can free it up. But if you get to a place where it gets hard again, then right at that spot, let's say right there, it, it started getting hard. Well, at that place where it's too tight, just put your screwdriver in and loosen it and then tighten it. And by loosening it, it's just going to open up just ever so gently to, because it's 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 too hard, it's pressed up too tightly against that surface. So if you just loosen it and then tighten it again, it will it will gently move out and and give you a little space. But our but our objective is that that the knob is moving freely, and there's no space in here. There's no wiggle. and quiet. So that's, that's our first step. Our next step is we're going to want to put lubrication in our bottom gear. And you may not have gotten yours this clean. I have access to a supersonic cleaner, so it makes it very clean. But uh, if you've let it soak in some fuel and made sure that uh, all the the old grease is out of those teeth, then uh, you're good. So this time we're not going to use number three, we're going to use a, a lighter grease, a number, this is a number 17, hog strike number 17 
or it used to be number two, which you can't get anymore. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a light film in all the teeth. Light, light film of, of grease, not a lot. Almost like a spider web, spider web amount of, of grease. Get it in all of the teeth. Not a lot, just, just so that there's just a little dab, a little bit in every one, in every tooth. The next thing we're going to do is put some lubrication in these surfaces. And again, it's going to be our number two, number 17, number two. And what I'm going to do is just put some grease in there, but then I'm going to wipe it out. And even though it looks like I'm wiping it out, what am I doing that for? Actually, I may be wiping it out, but I'm leaving a little bit. I'm just leaving a little bit. And in this top surface, even though I'm rubbing it out, I'm actually putting a slight, an ever so slight film on it because I'm not using cleaning solution. So that even though I've wiped that out, there's still a little bit on there. And that's all you need, it's just a little bit. And also, my filter wheel, after I've cleaned all the surfaces, and cleaned all the old grease off of these, I'm going to do similar. I'm going to put some grease on here. Careful not to touch your your filters while you're spreading the lube around. And then once again, I'm going to wipe it off. So that, even though I've wiped it off, I'm still leaving just the slightest film of grease on there. You don't have to do this bottom because uh, that's not going to be that's going to be attached to the handle. Okay, I've lubed that, and then my my diaphragm wheel, again being very careful, but something that's important to know is that there is a very small washer right there, very thin. It's uh, as thin as a piece of paper. That that washer sometimes it's it may still be on here. So we're going to, again, we're going to put a little bit of lube on these surfaces and just a little bit right there. Careful. Careful doing that diaphragm well. And then wiping it off. Okay, I've got a little loop there. Um, I'm going to put this back in the bag for just a, a minute. Um, these surfaces, just a little crease in there.
wipe it out. You don't need any grease on here because it's not gonna it's it's going to be attached. We don't need grease. But this is going to be the top, the shiny well, both sides are shiny. A lot of them. This shiny side is up top and the painted side is on the bottom, but both of them. Okay. I think we've lubed everything. Uh, I may have forgotten about right in here where that washer is going to be riding. Just the, just the damn. Whoops. Try not to get any fibers on there. Blow it out. Okay, now we're, it's time to put it together. So what we're going to do first of all is get our gear with the, the screws back in. The screws back in. This one is on the right. This one is on the left. The little one's on the left. And we're going to drop, drop it right in here. Just going to drop it and see we can turn it and we're going to want to turn it so that the the long screw is is forward we're going to put our spring back in here for the filter wheel detent and the wheel you don't have to put any lubrication on that. It should be fine. It should be turning. And when we put that back in, you'll notice it's got a little pin on it. It, it has to be aimed so that it will, will go down in the, in the little s spaces. See, it, there's the little grooves down there, so turn it so that when it goes down, it's going to fall in those spaces. That's all lined up. I'm going to move this out of the way, this way. And the first thing we're going to do is put our filter wheel out. We're going to get the bottom here, and we're going to put our filter wheel down, making sure our detent is lined up so that when it goes down it's going to fall into place. We're going to put our filter wheel down and as it's going down we're going to slide it through the knob. Make sure your knob's not screwed out so it, it can go in. Okay, once we have, have it in there, see I've got my finger pushing down, but I'm not touching the filters. I'm on this side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn so that the first filter on the left is all the way back here, and it's, it's, it's engaging the detent underneath it. So this filter is all the way back there, and I've got my handle in, and I'm going to turn my handle all the way to this side. And I'm holding it down, and I'm going to go ahead and just finger tighten. Finger tighten the filter wheel knob so it's, it's tight. Now I'm going to check it. See how freely it moves. It should move freely. 
if there's some if there's uh, unusual okay it's down there now I'm going to I'm going to release it just a little bit have a little bit of space just a little bit of space there maybe it's thick as a piece of paper I'm gonna, and I'm going to check how easily it spins and it should spin easily now that's set I'm all the way over here my last filter is back here see as I'm turning it when I wind up on this side it's going to be the last filter on this side So just get it close for now. Okay, we've still got our gear in the bottom. I'm going to turn. And on this piece, we're going to try to get this piece to fall in between these two screws. So turn your here so that the screws are on both sides and then this is going to go right in between them your stops but here's here's the fun part now we can grab our diaphragm wheel out of the bag we've got lubed on it already we're going to test it to see if it's moving freely should be moving freely and if we wanted to we could also make sure that it's moving freely on our on our little gear because it, we're going to be pushing it down into it and so it's going to need to go in there easily okay I'm going to put this back Now I'm going to fit this in our, on top of our filter wheel. It's going down, but I'm going to slide the next piece with the pins going down. And it's going to go in between the filter knob and the gear as I'm pushing down. So. I'm going to put it into place and then push, continue pushing my filter wheel down so that it goes inside that, the stop and then I'm letting it rest. So it's stopping because, it's, whoops, I'm going to turn it. It's stopping because it's hitting my gear. I'm going to take my pointer and move the gear so that it will allow the diaphragm wheel shaft to fall into place and these two stop pins are going to be in the middle in between the two screws so I'm going to push it behind pull it behind it I'm pushing on the on the gear to line it up and I'm going to shake it while it falls and it falls in. So see because we already checked to make sure that it was going to go in our shaft easily both pieces then all I had to do was line it up with a pointer so that it would fall through the gear and past it and now we, we're, we're right at where we want to be We've got our two screws on each side of the stop and a stop is, is in the middle. Sometimes if you're not watching it'll, it'll turn too much one way or the other and if so you're going to have to lift the fixation wheel back out and, and do it again until it all lines up. Okay now we're, we're there. Okay now 
what we're going to do is, since we're down all the way, our filter will get, once again, your, your pointer and turn, turn your diaphragm wheel. Don't, don't touch any of the diaphragms, even the smallest one. Don't get close to it. Try to stay in the middle and turn, turn your diaphragm wheel until the blue filter is once again right at the stop. So we've got to turn it until that this detent rests in that spot right at the blue filter. That's going to be our, our reference. We've got that. Now we can put our spring back in that we took out earlier. And it just slides into the, the back of the little detent arm. And then I'm going to turn it as I'm pushing forward a little bit to get it past the pin that it's going to rest on. So I'm turning it. pushing it a little bit to go past, and then it falls into place. So we have our pin in. It's all the way in. It's only going to go in so far, and it's resting right. And there's a little groove in here that the pin will stay in. OK, we've got everything in. OK, now. Before we start setting our gear, tightening our gears up, we've gonna, we're going to have to put the, the right pressure on everything. So now we're going to put our top back on. And before you put the, your top on, you want to make sure, make sure you've cleaned it, the, the, the slits with a little acetone. I'm going to open them up just a little bit. Wipe them. Blow it out. And make sure this is moving freely. The slit rod. If it's not moving freely, rim oil, just a drop. Not too much. And be careful when you're opening it up that, that your little drop of oil didn't go on the slits. Okay. Make sure your pen is clean. And if you want to put a little a drop of rim oil on the on your pen. You can do that. Now we're ready to insert it. Okay. It'll find its way in. And once again what we're looking for is to line the pin up with the bottom half. And if, if it was hard coming out, it might be hard pushing back in. This one, uh, fortunately, the pin is going in easily. So what, we're fitting that back in, and now we can put our four screws back in. Okay, we've got our four screws in. Still, everything here is loose. We haven't done anything with it yet. Well, now that we have the correct pressure on everything, now we can set our, our, our gear and our fixation distances. And first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this, but not turn it. Just loosen it so that I have a little bit of space here so that it's the pressure in here, everything is like it should be. And then I'm just going to just tighten it. 
hand tighten for now. Okay, now I know my, my pressure is all right. Now it's time to set the, the, the gear. Okay, I'm going to turn my little screw all the way in, but then I'm going to back out. I'm loosen it. I'm going to turn it in so we can clear these stops while I turn it. So now I'm, I'm turning it, but it's not turning the wheel yet because I haven't tightened it down. I just I'm just cleared the stops. Now it's time to set the distance here. And this is going to take some practice. First I'm going to screw it all the way in, then back off so that this gear can still move up and down. But for me to tighten it now, I'm just going to have to tighten it a little bit because I'm so close to tightening it that it's only going to take a little bit. It's still free but very close to being able to tighten. Now here's here's our here's here's where we want to do. We've got it on blue. This is our reference point and that's where our stop is going to be. So if if I push this all the way down, it's going to be too stiff. So I've got to back off a little bit. I'm going to I'm moving your stop off of that gear just a little bit and then I'm but I'm turning it a little bit that way to get some space between our stop and our screw. You'll see what I why we're doing that in in a minute. Right now it's pushed all the way against it. I'm using my index finger. And I'm my index finger is going to pull the stop a little bit away from it. bit away from it and then I'm going to go that way just ever so slightly and then I'm going to tighten my screw a big screw as 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 that screw is up against the stop I'm just barely tightening two fingers because I want to test it first now what I want to do is test and see how much space I've got. If I can just wiggle my handle and it's making noise, then it's a little bit too loose. The, the space should be so tight that yes it moves freely, but it's not too much. And yeah, that would be okay, but factory it'd be just a little bit too too loose. So what I've got to do is loosen my screw back up and then push it down, push my gear down a little bit, a, a, down a little bit more and then tighten it. So I'm going to do that. I'm taking my finger, I'm going to, first I'm going to push the stop all the way this way. And, I, and also, I put too much space in between here, because see, now it's, it's too much space. All I need is just a little bit. That's too much. So I've got to redo it. You may have to do it a few times until you get it right. Okay, I've turned it to where it's tight. This is all down, but I'm going to raise it up, R raise it up a little bit and turn it and then tighten it and see if that's what I want. I'm going to straighten it up and try it. Okay, it moves and um, 
Now I'm going to now I'm going to turn it. It's tight enough that now everything is going to start turning. And as I begin to turn, if if I'm getting resistance already, then it's too tight. Yeah, I can do it, but it, it's just too tight. And I've got too much space. See, the space is just too much. So I've got to, I've got to do it again. So that time I got it too tight. So I just have to do it a few times to see, okay, what, how much do I have to pull that stop back to get the, the right, okay, this moves freely, makes just the gentlest noise, and now I'm going to turn it. And if I'm turning it and it's turning free, then I, I might be okay. Okay, you might have to do it a number of times until it's moving freely and it's not grabbing and going all the way to the end. But, okay. Once you've gotten that, but our space is wrong. See, our stop, when I come to my stop, there should be equal amount of extra space on each side. There, I've got very little. This side, I've got a lot. I've got a lot of extra. So what we're trying to do is find a balance where each side has a little bit extra past it. So one way to do it is to to get a little more space is just flick it. Okay, this one has a, some space and a little bit. Okay, it, that's moving like that. And the other side is less. So I have too little on this side, so I've got to get some back. So I'm going to flick it. So I've got that amount of space and that amount of space. That seems about right. They both have about the same extra. So I think our space is right. It's moving freely and our space is right. Our space is fairly equal. Now I can go ahead and tighten these screws not with just two fingers, but my hand. I'm going to tighten it. And I'm going to tighten the other, the little screw now. Okay, I've tightened them both and I'm going to recheck it. I feel my space there. Okay, it looks like I've got a little bit more space over here now than I do over here. That sometimes happens when you, when you tighten the screw up. You, you lose a little bit more on the uh, blue side. So, I'm going to go ahead and loosen them a little bit and get it right. And, uh, but I'm not going to take your time to do it. Okay, I took the time to to get it right the way I like it, uh, where I have, it's tight, but I have similar space on both sides of my stop. Now, you may be doing it and you, and it's like 
you do not want to loosen what you've you don't want to lose what you've got and but yet the spacing is wrong so there is a way you can adjust the spacing sometimes you have too much space on both stops and you need to um, adjust it so on the back of your stop you have some little screws and when when you go to the, when you end up at the stop those screws hit the back of this panel see see how it, how they turn when I go to to this side this stop is hitting the back and when I turn it to the left this one is hitting the back now on the back here you can adjust these screws your stop your stop space but with uh, with some needle nose and you can turn it one way or the other so think about it. If the screw is shorter, then it's going to give you more space. If you open it up, then it's going to give you less space. So if you ever need to, if you've got too much space on both sides and your, your, your spacing is, is the way you want it, then you can go ahead and turn it one way or the other to to increase or limit your your stop space on both sides but I just want to tell you it takes a very little you can't even tell you're turning it but if you turn it just 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 a little bit it makes quite a difference so uh, if you ever adjust those you'll see how it's just the slightest move either increases your spacing at the end of your stops or, or either increases or decreases by turning the back of those little. Okay, once you've got that the way you like it, go ahead and put some fingernail polish on the screws uh, to keep them from coming out, from loosening. And that's what the factory does. And sometimes you have to loosen it with some acetone if, if they won't loosen. So just put a little bit on the edge on both screws. And then those are locked in. Now we have to set our spacing for our, for our filter well. And remember we left a little gap in here, but we don't know how much. So now we're going to go ahead and put our cover on. And put our cover on. And if, if you're space isn't right you can loosen it so that your cover will go back on easier and put your screw on we got our cover back on our screw in and now it's time to adjust the the spacing of our filter wheel and likewise it should have the same amount of extra space on each side. That's so when the doctor flicks it over, if, if he's got too much space, it's going to go past the filter. And if, it, if it's not enough, then it won't actually go into the right filter. So what we're going to try to do is, is since we're on our last filter when we set it originally, and if you're not sure if you've got it on the last one will then look inside and verify that you are on your last filter. Uh, you, you may have gotten it off so just verify that you're you are on your last filter. And set our spacing similar 
with your index finger, you're going to be pushing against the, the uh, knob. And it's inside the cover, so maybe like with your fingernail or the tip of your finger, you're going to be holding against it, and you're going to loosen the knob, and we're going to try to space it in between the two halves, and we're going to move it just a little bit off of the, the end, the edge, just the slightest gap, and keeping it in the middle, and you may not get it the first time, but after a while you could begin to see. I'm just moving it so little bit, see I can move it with my finger. But I'm just taking it off of that edge just a little bit because that's all, that's all there is. And then I'm just going to tighten it with my fingers. Okay, now I'm going to lift it up, straight up, and I'm going to I'm going to test the spacing. I got a little space there, but none, not much here. So I've got that wrong. I got too much space here and none here. So I've got too much space. So I'm going to go back and do it again. I'm going to put my finger on it to, so I can move it the way I want and I'm going to move it off that edge just a little bit tighten it with my fingers only as tight as I can get with my fingers and then test it so if I have a little bit of gap on each side then you're probably good and making sure it's, it's traveling in the middle of our cover. Okay, I'm going to mess with mine to get it just perfect, but that's the idea, And uh, but I don't want to waste your time. Okay, once you have your spacing the way you like it. Go ahead and tighten it up. Get your small Allen wrench, something that will go in the hole and tighten it up very tight. Try to get it very tight. And then check it. And that should be it. Your, your spacing is the same on this side. Your spacing is the same on here. And that's it. Now we're going to put it back together. When it comes time to putting it back on your slit lamp, we're going to want to put a little bit of grease in our detents. There could be three. The newer styles have even five. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit of number two, number two or number 17 grease in each one of the little detents. And I'm going to put a little bit of grease on these surfaces on the bottom. That's where the bottom is going to reside. See how this is shiny? That's what's going to be touching. It's going to be touching right there, that little lip. So I'm putting a little bit of lube on those and then I'm going to put a little a little bit of rim oil on that 
spot that they're going to be resting on. Just some drops there. The stage, I'm going to put a little drop in the middle and on the side. That's where the, the rod is going to be traveling on the stage. And I've got a little grease on my finger. I'm going to dab the bottom of here and inside here. And then I'm going to put it back on. And it should move freely. If if it if it was stiff, then you you probably have needed to clean all these surfaces first before you put the lube back on. But if you've done that, then it should move freely. And then don't forget to put your safety screw back in. Safety screws back in. Should move freely. Everything should be turning. It should be nice and crisp when you're turning your diaphragm rotating knob. And your, your filter wheel should be moving freely and quietly. And so you should be good. Now, when you look through your binoculars, you'll see if you got any dust on the, the diaphragms or any dust on the filters. So uh, you don't have to panic. Just, uh, well, if you want to get it off, you should. Just, just take your... your four screws back off. Just take your four screws back off and take your top half back off. Everything is going to be fine. You, you're not going to lose any of your tensions or anything because everything is tight. You can take that off and and blow out your Wherever you see dust, if, if you've got some particles on your diaphragm, you, you should maybe get some acetone with a cotton swab and a clean cotton swab and, and clean those. It's not, not that easy to, to uh, clean them once they get a little, some particles on there. And also the filter, you should have access to it. You can just maybe blow it off. Sometimes little fibers when you're putting the top half back on will fall on your filters. So, um, and then put your top back on and, and look through your, your binoculars to see if you've gotten, gotten it all clean, all the dust off of your filter and your diaphragms. And if you do, then you're good. I know this is quite an involved uh, process, and it is. It's it's like this is like the um, it's like the brain of your slit lamp, or or some organ. It, it's a, a very important organ, and and so yeah, this 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 was a, a very important part. So sorry it's so long, and. Um, it just takes practice to get it, and, and, um, and there it is. Have fun.